Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, run through of the simple radio. Um, I've meaning to do this for a while, I just haven't got around to doing it. <laughs> so, uh, so here it is. Um, the software you can get from GitHub or from the forum. So if you get to the GitHub page, you just go to releases and always download the one that's the, the latest release. So it's uh, very easy to install. You simply download this zip. Make sure you extract the zip somewhere. Doesn't really matter where. And I lost it, there it is. And simply run the installer. Say yes. Uh, so pick where you want it to go. Pick your save games folder. Uh, this is by default filled in for you, but you can always go and get it. So let's go find it now. See users, Kieran. Uh, save games. There we go. And then simply click install or update simple radio. So if you already have it installed and want to update it, and you just do that. Oh, there's a. Uh, go away. Right. So simple radio is now installed. Let's just double check that is actually the case, and I'll also show you how to install it manually. So uh, you go to your C users, your username, save games, DCS scripts, or if it is uh, the open alpha, it's in here, scripts. So what you should see is uh, two files, simple radio standalone.lua and SRS game GUI. Those two files are needed for the radio to function. Uh, you'll also see it export.lua and your export.lua should be very little and basically consist of uh, at most a few lines. Uh, mine's got a tag view entry but uh, if you don't have tag view it will just consist of this line. So make sure this line is here and it's in the instructions as well if, if you need to uh, install it. So that's uh, that's it actually to get it set up for DCS. So let's launch DCS. I will wait, I'll just launch a server so that we can talk to something. Uh, the program to connect. There we go. And there we go. So let me just configure the uh, just configure the hotkeys. So I'm gonna use my Warhog throttle. Uh, for the hotkeys for switching radios. Uh, the hotkeys only work on certain aircraft and I'll run through those in a bit. Um, I'm going to enable radio effects and I want the audio to come out of these earphones. Um, I can preview my audio so you'll hear me twice now. Uh, so uh, this so is the preview. preview. And that's, and that's the preview, preview without, without audio. audio. There we go. Okay. And this, this is, is microphone, microphone boost. boost. So you'll so see, see it gets, it gets louder, louder and quieter. And quieter. Um, so simply select your headphone, uh, sorry, a microphone, select your output device and connect to a server. So actually I'm going to use the body spike server. So let's go there. There we go, we're connected. So we can just uh, minimize that now and get out of the way. This here is the radio overlay. Uh, this is optional. Uh, it's a bit tricky to move around. Make sure you click on some text to drag and click. Uh, if you have three screens, you'll find that it appears as a single line, but the fix is easy. You just drag it to the edge of the window and then uh, resize. You'll also notice it's resolution independent, so you can have it very big if needs be, and you can change the opacity. Uh, but this is optional. You don't actually need to use this if you don't want to. So let's jump into a mission. Uh, right. Video test. There we go. So one thing to make to note is if the server doesn't have allow player exports, you'll find that the radio is not coming from the aircraft. It's uh, it will use just a default radio. So if if you see it not working, that's the export option that needs to be on on your favourite server to use the radio. 
uh, the server you connect to can be anywhere. It doesn't actually matter. Um, you don't have to all be connected. You don't all have to be on the same server to be connected to the same remote server. Uh, so let's start that up. Close this one as we don't need it. Right, so let's start at the A10E then. Uh, so this is an FC3 aircraft. Oh, I just realized my uh, helicopter set up wrong. And as it's FC3, the uh, hotkeys work. So you'll see that I'm using my hotkeys to cycle through the different radios. And I can also change the volume on each radio as well. Um, to transmit, I just hold my push to talk. And you'll see that the uh, win window now lights up white, which shows that I'm transmitting or receiving on that channel. Changing the frequency is as easy as clicking the buttons. And there are limits built into each radio that are uh, roughly equal to the real life counterpart. So let me switch to a different one now. Uh, so we'll do an A10C. Okay, so the A10C, you'll notice uh, these buttons no longer work because this is a full clickable cockpit aircraft and the uh, volume slider doesn't actually work either. It just gets dragged back down. So what that means is the in-cockpit radios need to be turned up on the volume. So that's one. That's two. And that's three. So uh, you'll now see that this frequency here is being copied into the overlay. And uh, make sure that your radio is set to main. Uh, you can also uh, listen on the guard frequency with both. So what that means is your radio will receive on this frequency here as well as the guard frequency. And make sure your uh, radio is on manual to make sure that the frequency you see here is what actually is being uh, used. So that's the A10A. So the A10A, one thing to note as well, does have hotkeys on its hotas. So uh, the hotkeys also work here. So push to talk and switch radios. There's radio 1, radio 2 and radio 3. You can see here. Okay, let's try the next one. What we got? K4. Okay, so this radio is very simple. It's right here. Uh, you've got volume. And you've got two, uh, three channels actually, but you can edit them with the mission editor. And that's it. That's all you got to do for this one. Uh, so obviously there's no hotkeys because there's no hotas because uh, it's a World War II plane. And it's only got one radio, which you can see there. So let's do the F-86. Uh, again, so this aircraft actually has a... Uh, a push to talk button in the cockpit. Uh, so you'll see here, it's right here on the throttle. So if you press that, it will actually do push to talk. Um, you can also obviously use the, the hotkey that you've already bound. And the radio frequencies are here. So we can cycle through these and see it change. Uh, this again has a guard frequency. There we go. F-15. Obviously FC-3 aircraft. It has uh, two radios in real life, as far as I know. And it has a realistic frequency set for both of them. Um, 
the first radio is always listening on the guard frequency as well. And again, we can up this radio frequency like so and mess with its volume. One ninety, pretty much the same as the one oh nine. It's just on the different side. Uh, it has a volume control. But uh, unfortunately, this isn't reporting the right state to my radio. So for the minute, this is disabled. And again, you can change the frequency here. L39. Uh, this is an interesting aircraft because you have uh, two seats. So I can't switch the back seat in multiplayer. But uh, here is the transmit button for the radio. And here is the transmit button for the intercom. So by default, your push to talk will just talk over the radio. But there is a PTT on the throttle, which you can just uh, press the keys for in DCS as normal. And to talk to the back seat. And the volume control for both is here. There we go. Same in the ZA, so I won't bother with that. Clear out up short to select the HUD. And then in DMS left and right to select weapons. And you can see what's selected on the left side of the. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm just going to mute uh, body speak again. Oh. Stop, Mirage. Uh, so you can actually see someone transmitting there on uh, 129, but I've turned the volume down so we can't hear them. So Mirage again. Uh, it's got HOTAS, so we've got uh, key bindings through simple radio that work, which you can see here. And uh, the radio is down here. It supports both the channels and the manual mode, depending on which mode you've got it in. And the volume, as you just saw, is down here. So you got one radio and two. Oh, I just found Pikey on 264 there. Uh, MiG-15. Again, it actually has an in-cockpit push to talk, which we can use. Like that. Or we'll press the push to talk. And the radio is under here. Which we can swizzle around and volume is under here as well. Uh, MiG-21. This will lag my PC for a minute. Damn, I'll make 21. There we go. Right. So radio one here, uh, volume control, and it just has channels. So you'll see it spins the channels here and the frequency changes. Uh, these channels are, have to be set in the mission editor. And again, this has a push to talk in cockpit, which you can use if you want to, uh, which can be bound as normal through DCS, or the uh, hotkey we set in the simple radio. Okay, P51D. This has got a good radio. You can hear uh, modern aircraft on it if you configure the right frequencies. So the radio is just over here. So we've got uh, four channels, which can be configured with the mission editor again. Uh, there is a push to talk as well, which works. Or again, hotkey. Okay, S25T. Two radios and obviously FC3, so we've got hotkeys switching between the two. Uh, if I didn't make it clear earlier, the green dot indicates the current radio you're going to speak on. And 
minus 27. Why not? Again, two radios, pretty much the same as the SU25D. Uh, one long range and one sort of medium range radio. I'll uh, edit the video and add back in the helicopters. All right, I just added the uh, helicopters back on and they're uh, just going to do it on single player, but it will still work. So we're now in the MI8. The uh, way you change which radio you're speaking on is here. Uh, sorry, there we go. So you'll see here each radio we select changes the dot here. Uh, you've got three radios. You've got the uh, Jadro down here, which is uh, the bottom radio. You've got your uh, normal radio here, which you can change the frequency on. Again, you can listen on the guard channel with this, and that's what the G indicates. And you've got your third radio here. But make sure when you change the frequency, you also press the tune button, which will change the radio and tune it in. Again, uh, volumes are built into the cockpit, so we can just use the mouse wheel on each one of those. And these obviously don't work. And there's also a push to talk built onto the stick, which you can just see here. So if I click that, you'll now see we're transmitting. And that works in the co-pilot seat as well. There we go. And again, we're transmitting. Uh, let's do the Huey. Oh, it's K50. Right. Black Shark's got uh, two radios. You switch between them uh, down here. So that's radio one, that's radio two, that's nothing. Radio one, radio two. Now again, your radio is here, it's got a guard channel and it can also switch between AM and FM, which is quite interesting. There you go. Uh, you can turn on guard or not. And uh, so this one, when you turn on guard, it actually changes the radio to listen on the guard frequency. So it hasn't got a listen on guard, unfortunately. And again, change the frequency here. That works fine. And your other radio is whoop, over here. And again, we've got channels and volume. So that's that. Let's do the Gazelle. Okay, so the Gazelle doesn't have uh, hottest controls. However, the uh, radio panel is currently mostly inoperative other than the volumes. Uh, so what I've done for the minute is enabled the hotkeys, as you see here, uh, to work on the Gazelle. But when this is enabled, it will be no longer done through the hotkeys. It will be done properly through the cockpit. And we've got volume here as well that works, as you can see. Okay, so lastly, the Huey. This uh, has a very easy radio selector. So the radio selector on the Huey is over here. Uh, so you'll see switching between them switches between the radios. Um, again, this is a uh, Got a guard frequency option on the radio, so off obviously turns it off. And we go TR plus G and list on the radio, and then we can change all the frequencies as well as uh, the volume on all the aircraft radios. And lastly, the FM1 here. There we go. So, obviously, when you're if you're a cold start, make sure you turn all your radios to TR and uh, keep them on manual if possible so you can pick what frequency you actually want and that's it so the only gotchas to make sure are that the server has the players export option uh, for the server you're on otherwise you won't be able to use the cockpit radios 
uh, make sure you use a joystick to bind these controls here. Uh, I'm going to take away keyboard because it doesn't work properly. Uh, DCS takes the keyboard input so I can't pass it to my radio. Um, here you can configure the radios. You can do this as well while the game's running and you can launch these overlays at any time when the game's running. You don't have to start DCS first. So you can also not use that overlay as well if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, and again, this is microphone boost. So just to give you an idea of what uh, running a server is like for it, I will just uh, load up the new server. So there we go. To launch the server, you just double click on that. Let's collect to the server. There we go. Uh, you can secure the radios such that each side can't hear the other. So if you turn this option on, red can only hear red and blue can only hear blue and spectators can only hear spectators. Uh, if you turn this option to disabled, uh, spectators will no longer be able to transmit at all to each other, but they will be able to hear. So those options take place immediately. You don't need to restart the server. Uh, there's also a client admin panel here, which has obviously got the kick and ban buttons, so you can kick me. And you can see here I've been disconnected, so let's reconnect. Uh, nicely, you'll see there's a, uh, a coalition indicator here. So if we just jump to multiplayer and start a server up. Uh, you'll see we've gone white because we're on spectators. Uh, it's now blue because we are on blue and red because we're on red. So let's just say the server admins can have uh, a vague idea of who's in the server. And obviously this takes the game, uh, the name from DCS. Um, that's about it really. So as I say, it's pretty early days for this software. Um, so please post if you have any issues. Uh, I really need help resolving issues people have, and I don't know unless you tell me. Um, the code's all available here, and the thread is available here, which you've all seen. And as you can see, it's very easy to get set up, uh, it's very easy to configure, and it's hopefully very easy to use. But uh, yeah, please post if you have any questions. Thanks.